In this second video about optimal transport, I'm going to talk about the Kantorovich problem. I'm going to define it, give some remarks and examples, and then say a few words about why it's a more tractable problem or more well behaved than Monsch's problem. So I'm beginning here with a picture uh, containing three blue houses here, which are going to symbolize factories producing some kind of goods. And then I have some red houses symbolizing consumers consuming the same goods. And I'm even going to add some, some numbers here indicating how much is produced in each factory. And I will, in the, I will put some numbers next to the red houses to indicate how much demand is here, how much the consumption is. Um, then Kantorovich problem consists in finding a, um, uh, the cheapest way to transport uh, the goods from the factories to the consumers. So from this picture here, I, one possibility is to move all the goods from this factory to that consumer. That would be 0.2 units of goods. And then move some of the goods from this factory up here to that consumer, 0.3 to be precise. Um, and then move the rest of the goods from this factory to this consumer here, that would be 0.3 units of goods. Uh, and then another 0.2 units of goods from here down to there. Um, what we have here is a feasible transport plan in the sense that it, um, it transports all the goods that is produced from each factory and each consumer gets exactly the correct amount of goods. So I'm gonna write it down in a more formal manner now. So let X and Y as usual as before, and as usual in optimal transport, we're gonna work on the level of Polish spaces. So X and Y are gonna be two Polish spaces. And uh, we're gonna have two probability measures. Mu, the source measure, which in this case here is the factory, and nu the target measure, measure on Y, which is the consumers. Uh, and we're also fixing a cost function. So that's a function from the product X times Y into R, which basically tells you the price of transporting something from point X to point Y. Um, then the set of uh, Transport plans is the set. So that's a set that depends on mu and nu, of course. Uh, and it's the set of it's the set of measures, probability measures on the product, um, such that the first and second marginal uh, are given by precisely mu and nu. So if I push forward gamma down to X, then I get mu. And if I push forward gamma down to Y, then I get nu. So pi X and pi Y here is just the natural projections from the product down to X and Y respectively. Uh, so given this, Kantorovich problem is to minimize the integral of the cost function um, against this transport plan. So we're integrating over the product here. And we're minimizing this over all transport plan. So over this set, pi mu nu. So before we move on to um, examples and, and remarks, uh, there are a couple of things I think we should note here. First of all, the objective function here is linear. It's linear in gamma. Uh, moreover, the set we're optimizing over, it's in fact, a, it's, a com it's a convex. It's a convex subset of the space of signed probability measures, signed measures. Moreover, it's actually compact. Uh, compact in 
the narrow topology. So the topology, topology you get by testing against continuous bounded function. Uh, the fact that it's compact follows from Prokhorov's theorem, which basically says that a family of probability measures on a Polish space is uh, relatively compact if and only if it's tight. And it's quite easy to verify that if you fix the marginals of a measure like this, then you get a tight family. Now, this is also interesting if we compare it to Monch's problem of optimal transport, where the, the set we're optimizing over is, this, is the set of transport maps, which is maps from X to Y, which um, pushes forward the source measure to, this, to the target measure. Now, this, uh, this is not a convex subset of an electro space. Uh, and it's also very hard or impossible to put the topology in this a meaningful topology where this is compact. Um, moreover, the objective function in Monch's problem is given by integrating over x the function c of x, t of x, uh, against mu, which is, of course, nonlinear in t. So going from Monch's problem to Kantorovich's problem, we're replacing something nonlinear, uh, which lives on a non-compact, non-convex space, to something which is very well behaved then. I'm gonna begin by an example which illustrates the difference between Monch chess and Kantorovich problem. So it's a very simple example that X and Y be as the real line. And then let our source measure be as the Dirac measure sent at zero. And the target measure be uh, combination, linear combination of Dirac measures one at minus one and the other one at one. Then a transport plan. One example of a transport plan is given by the following. So we take one half times uh, a Dirac master centered at zero comma one. So transport plan is a measure on the product. And then another Dirac at the point zero minus one. Then this is a transport plan. And what it, if we, we can also illustrate it in the following way. So here is our real line. We have our source here. And then our two target, our target measure, which is supported on these two points. And what this transport plan says is that we should just take half of the mass uh, situated here and move it to this point and half of the mass should go to this point. And in general, if we have um, uh, a subset of X, a measurable subset of X and a measurable subset of Y, and then some, some source and target measure, not necessarily discrete as in the example above, uh, and the transport plan, then the um, gamma measure of the product at A times B, this should be interpreted as the, the amount transported from A to B. Another important remark is that this problem uh, somehow contains Monch's problem. In particular, if we have a transport map, so we have a map from X to Y, uh, which pushes forward the source measure to the target measure, then this induces a transport plan. And the way to get a transport plan from this is just to put gamma t to be 
uh, the push forward of the identity times t of mu. So this map here is a map from x to the product x times y. And then we're just pushing forward the source measure with this map. And that gives us a transport plan, which corresponds exactly to the map t then. In fact, it's supported on the graph of t. And moreover than uh, the cost of this transport plan here, it's precisely the same as the cost of the transport map in Monsha's problem. So in other words, Kantorovich problem is a relaxation of Monsha's problem. So if you want, you could think of it like uh, in Monsha's problem, we are minimizing a cost function over something which is sort of not convex, not compact. And then in Kantorovich problem, we're extending uh, the set of admissible points we are optimizing over. And then we get something which is instead both compact and convex. Moreover, it turns out that pretty often the solution to Kantorovich problem is actually given by, uh, by a transport map. In some sense, the, solution, the solutions tends to be on this set here we started with. So solving Kantorovich problem is often, even though it's a lot easier to solve, it's often the same thing. It's equivalent to solving Monsch's problem. As a final remark, to illustrate that this is an, uh, an easier problem, uh, is that a optimal, an optimal transport plan exists in pretty high generality. So it exists if uh, so one set of conditions which will guarantee existence is is if uh, um, c is lower semi-continuous and we have the following lower bound for c it should be bounded from below by one function depending on x and one function depending on y where a and b they're both L1 functions. So A is a function on X and Y, B is a function on Y. Um, they're both L1 with respect to mu and nu respectively. And uh, they're also upper semi-continuous. So you mentioned before that this, the um, space of transport plan is a compact, uh, compacted. So then it's just a matter of verifying that this function here, the objective function, is continuous or lower semi-continuous uh, as a function of, uh, of gamma with respect to the narrow topology. And this can be done under these assumptions. So that's just one thing. Another thing which, uh, which makes a Kantorovich problem sort of a fascinating and also tractable is that as a linear optimization problem on a convex set, it has a dual. This is called the Kantorovich dual. Uh, and hopefully I will cover that in the next video. <laughs>